The Super Mario series is one of the longest running video game franchises of all time. And even though Mario himself is the most profitable IP in all of video game history, almost doubling the sales of Tetris, which is in second place, the only real reason for this is because Mario is shoehorned into 97% of Nintendo's output. He's at the top of every sporting league, including being a professional member of the NBA. He can beat Sonic, whose top speed is 186,000 miles a second in a running race. He has his own karting league, literally named after him. And if you're feeling sick, then lucky for you because he can throw pills the size of his head down your gullet with such accuracy that it eliminates the germs inside your tummy. But thankfully, I'm not talking about the hundreds of games that Nintendo shoehorns his character into. I'm talking specifically about the Super Mario series. Only 24 games, which is significantly less than the hundreds of other games that he features in. Let's learn to count Nintendo styly. First up, number one, Super Mario Brothers. Number two, Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels, originally Super Mario Brothers 2 in Japan. Then you got number three, Super Mario Brothers 2. Known in Japan as Super Mario Brothers USA, also released on the Game Boy Advance as Super Mario Advance, as the original is a sprite swap of yet another game called Doki Doki Panic. Number four is Super Mario Brothers 3, which was essentially re-released as Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Brothers 3. And then there's five, Super Mario Land. Number six is Super Mario World, later released release a Super Mario World Super Mario Advance 2. Number 7 is Super Mario Land 2 6 Golden Coins. And number 8 is Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island later releases Yoshi's Island Super Mario Advance 3. <sighs> Surely the next entry is just Super Mario Brothers 9, right? <laughs> Here we go! Still, the craziest thing about all of this is that nobody cares. Nobody gets as wound up as me when looking back at the origins and re-releases of this franchise. However, you know what everybody does get wound up about? New Super Mario Brothers. A series of six super games, if you will, that started their life a little bit later on in the Super Mario Brothers series. And after the release of Super Mario Brothers U, the franchise has only ever come back for the odd cameo and make your own levels in Super Mario Maker 1 and 2, which really did put a nail in the quote unquote new coffin. That's no longer new, but will always be known as new. We're at a point in time now where this small mini series has finished and the entire internet are looking back at it with weltering rose tinted goggles that are broken and have the wrong prescription. Look, I get it. Super Mario Bros. Wonder looks incredible, but let's not take away from the importance of the new series. Yes, I can give you the name. It's beyond stupid, even for Nintendo. But love it or hate it, this IP was incredibly important. And today, I plan to look into exactly why that is. Who made them? The somewhat surprising popularity of the series. And of course, we'll look into every single entry too. In... New Super Mario Brothers, the complete history. Welcome to Slope's Game Room. Yeah, it is such a bad name. Our story begins in 2003. By this point in the world of Nintendo, Mario hadn't exactly been busy in the 2D space. I'm talking 11 years since the last entry that was Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, the fifth best-selling Game Boy game of all time, behind the original Super Mario Land. And that game, of course, itself, spawned a whole heap of Wario Land games, the first of which is a direct sequel to what came before it, but for Wario. <laughs> You're getting very greedy. You are me, Wario. You're very handsome. You have amazing powers. 
plundering village pirates' treasure, bag a bazillion coins, buying me a castle bigger than Mario's. Repeat after me. I'm the bad guy in Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3, where being bad is good and greed is good. <laughs> Come and get it on Game Boy, greedy. Besides all the confusingly titled remakes for the Game Boy's successor, the Game Boy Advance, nothing. That's not to say that he didn't get his fair share of questionable new games, but 2D games? Nada. It's crazy to think that Nintendo went an entire platform and a seriously popular platform without releasing a new Super Mario Bros. game. And no, I don't mean that kind of new yet. Here we are. Oh, and by the way, both the Virtual Boy and the incorrectly spelt Game Boy Color didn't get one either. Although they too got plenty of Wario Land games, and looking back, that's the reason. Nintendo's research and development one team, aka the OG Nintendo bad boys, who were responsible for a whole heap of classic Nintendo goodness dating all the way back to the game and watch games. Well, Technically, actually, they go further back than even that, being that the team created toys for the company too. Either way, these were the guys that started it all for the company, and these were the guys that made the last proper 2D Mario game as part of the Super Mario series. They then went on to make all of those Wario Land games, which I'm sure I'll talk about in more detail in the future, and this carried on until 2004, until Nintendo had a big restructuring and moved all of these members of staff around into different development studios. And whilst they did all of that, the OG Super Mario Bros. team who went on to make all of those Game Boy Advance remakes called Nintendo Entertainment Analysis and Development, another riveting name by the way Nintendo, were also making loads of 3D Mario games too. You know, 64, Sunshine. Well, actually, that was it by this point. Besides the well-respected spin-offs, these guys were also keeping busy working on yet another remake, Super Mario 64 DS. Again, stupid name. But stupid names aside, Super Mario 64 DS showed the world that whatever Sony can do, Nintendo can do almost as well. Sure, 3D games still looked better on the PSP, but they weren't Mario 64 now, were they? And yes, yeah, sure, it had its issues, but for the time, it was great. The problem was that everybody thought that this was the end of 2D Mario games, even on the handheld systems. That was unless you went to E3 2004. It's unlike Nintendo to do this, but here we are. Sure, sometimes Miyamoto might let slip what they're working on a decade or so before a game is released, but you almost never see gameplay footage two years before a game comes out. But again, here we are. Looking at a 3D character model on a 2D field, of course, the reason this was shown off so far in advance was to build up hype for the newly unveiled Nintendo DS. Press at the event were given a goodie bag that featured a mini DVD, which is where this footage came from, along with previews of plenty of other games too, and it was right here where the game was titled New Super Mario Brothers. And even though many thought that this was just a placeholder name, Hiroyuki Kimura, who had worked his way up from art director on the first of the Mario Advance titles, all the way up to the director by the time the fourth came around and was now the producer on this next game, literally saw it as nothing more than the fifth game in the confusingly titled Advance series. After we released Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3, people were asking if a 5 in the series would be released. And when the Nintendo DS system came out, it was perfect timing. So I thought, if we're gonna make it, it should be a new title. And there you have it. If it wasn't for the stupidly named Game Boy Advance series of games, then we wouldn't have the new Super Mario Bros. games as we know it. Maybe it would have had a better name. 
That early E3 footage is proof as to why these sort of things are not normally shown by Nintendo at such an early stage. The game is obviously very early in development, question blocks don't even work, coins are not collected, and the sound is off too. Thankfully, none of that mattered, because for those that cared, all this did show us was that the Super Series was coming back. Later demos showed a new logo and a few gameplay elements that never made it into the final game, but really, they are super minor besides the competitive race to the finish two-player mode that eventually got removed from the final game. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at that final game. New Super Mario Bros. is simply a great 2D Mario game. Yes, it's looked at more negatively these days, and if you ask me, it's because of the art style. Not only is the stupidly new, now old, but the graphics, just like the vast majority of early polygon-filled worlds of the late 90s and early 2000s, have more recently become far more outdated than the titles that came before them. That aside, that's really all the negativity I have towards this game. Because, sure, they look a bit clunky these days, especially when emulated, but thankfully when playing the game again for the first time in well over a decade, you realise this wasn't just for cosmetic purposes. This first entry in the new series does things that the previous games didn't, and it's all thanks to this new graphical style. The camera zooms in and out to better showcase what's going on on the screen, something I bet they would have loved to have done in the original Game Boy game, Mario can of course bend, stretch and squeeze his shape to make him look far more animated than before using 2D sprites. The environment can be morphed too. Seriously guys, stop hating on this game. It's good. It's not the best looking, sure, but it's still really, really good. In true Nintendo fashion, these new power-ups, some of which are designed around what the DS could handle, and some were just, well, new, are not just here for cosmetic purposes, they are in the game and are to be used if you want to discover everything that this game has to offer. Exploration is a huge element to this game's enjoyment, arguably more than the classics that came before it, and you can only discover everything that the game has to offer if you use these new to 2D abilities that the 3D Mario game had standardized, it's all here. Just like the many games before it, it's easy to forget how incredibly unique this game is. It's not just another Super Mario game with a few quirky power-ups and a few new levels with enemies and environments that bop along to the music. The entire game is based around everything that's new. And if you go back and check it out yourself, I'm sure you will agree. At the time, the new Super Mario Bros. games were a big hit, and this first title was, strangely enough, coming out in North America a whole 10 days before Japan got it. And the main reason for this was because they wanted to make sure they had enough units to meet demand. And they were right to be worried. 480,000 units on day one in Japan alone, 900,000 within the first four days, and for the time before Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, it was the best-selling game for the system and one of the most popular Mario titles of all time. And within 12 weeks of release, it had sold a million copies in America alone. So, here we are, it's 2006, and it's obviously time to start working on a sequel, right? Well, obviously yes. As soon as the first game was finished, another game started development. And to mix things up once again, Shigeru Miyamoto wanted to add an element to this entry that no other game in the series has been able to do before. Multiplayer. Well, four-player multiplayer, that is. 
With pretty much every Mario project I've worked on, we usually start out with some Mario experiment with multiplayer. And with the newly released Wii system allowing them to finally do that very thing, Miyamoto-san became obsessed, spending a crazy amount of time helping out Kimura-san and his team work on the sequel. He was involved with that game for a long time. I mean, he'd go on site and hardly ever come back. That's probably the longest he's spent on a game since I became president. That's when I first got a direct taste of Miyamoto-san's attention to detail. For example, when we decided to add the multiplayer feature, I thought if two players could play at once, it would be enough. I have a son, and I personally thought it would be fun enough if my son and I could play a Mario game at the same time. So when we made a prototype with a playable Mario and Luigi and presented it to Miyamoto-san, he made it clear he wanted four-player action, so we hastily changed it to a four-player compatible system. And that's exactly what that team did. Now Mario in 3D was great. I think everyone remembers the first time leaping into one of the pictures in the castle. But we admit, we haven't quite figured out how to move him into a fourth dimension. But that number, four, that's the key to Mario's next surprise. For the last 15 years, Mr. Miyamoto has been thinking about one new way to let you play a Mario game that's never been possible before. Today, here's his answer. New Super Mario Brothers for Wii. New Super Mario Brothers Wii came out only four months later, and it is without a doubt one of the best four-player platformers I've ever played to date. Once again, the new hardware and the new way to play, as in the Wii Mote, allowed for this game to have new power-ups and level designs based around those features. As it wasn't on such a small screen, this new title allowed for a far more zoomed out game in multiplayer. As it was a more frantic affair to either beat or help your teammates, this brought in the shake of the Wiimote feature that feels like an odd choice for such a precision heavy game, yet it's done in a way that never takes you away from the classic feel that New Super Mario Bros. on the Wii so perfectly executed. Here we go! Will we compete or cooperate? Will we freeze our enemies in their tracks or slide by on our bellies? Will we soar through the sky alone or hitch a ride with our friends? No matter how we play, with four-player new Super Mario Brothers Wii, we'll be playing together. So let's say it together. Rated E for everyone. Wii console now just $199.99. What's better is that this game is far more challenging compared to the DS game before it. However, to combat this, the game was the first to include the super guides that allowed younger players that were having a tough time get through the stages and eventually complete the game. But besides the odd bit of scenery that you can manipulate using the Wiimote, very little else was added here compared to before. Because when you take away this game's biggest feature, its multiplayer mode, that becomes incredibly obvious. Still, you want more of the same? Here it is, and here it comes. 2012 brought with it not one, but two new very safe entries in the new and now definitely getting old series. But before that, a whole year before that game came out, we got a new game, as in we got a new game, not for the Nintendo Wii, and that new game was called New Super Mario Bros. Wii Coin Battle. Again, not for the Nintendo Wii. A slot machine arcade type game that is now finally playable via emulation. And I say playable in the loosest possible way. The new idea here is to obviously get three in a row. One token will give you one chance of getting that three in a row, and five tokens will give you plenty more chances. Honestly, there is very little gameplay here. There's no major Super Mario style gameplay elements as most features seen on the screen are played automatically whilst you gamble, but not really because that's illegal in Japan. And the mini games in between are bare bones at best. Look. I've got to mention it, otherwise this wouldn't be the complete history, would it? So, 
Moving on. As stated, 2012 was a great year for fans of the new series, as we got two entries. The confusing thing is, again, why? Looking back, the new series isn't exactly beloved and Nintendo just got off the back of what many believe to be the greatest 3D Mario games ever made. Super Mario Galaxy in 2007 and even more so, Super Mario Galaxy 2 in 2010. So why make more 2D new games? Well, the figures don't lie. Collectively, and at this point in time, that point being 2010, the fantastically rated Galaxy 1 and 2 that were released on Nintendo's most successful home console of all time up to that point had sold up to around about 13 million collectively. Although bear in mind that figure comes from 2017 and therefore does include a hell of a lot of sales that came in after 2010, as this game was re-released as part of the Nintendo Select series and as a Wii U digital download. In other words, I'm being incredibly generous saying that these two games collectively sold 13 million. It's actually likely to be less than 10 million. Still, 10, 13 million, that's still very, very impressive, right? Damn straight. But how did it compare to just one game, New Super Mario Bros. for the DS? 30.80 million. And again, this also includes future downloads for the 3DS. And what about New Super Mario Bros. Wii? Yep. That one hit 30 million too. Again, that also includes later re-releases, blah, blah, blah. But come on, the winner is clear here. And according to Shigzi, the reason is clear too. During an earnings briefing that went on in 2010 when the company was talking about what they were going to put on the soon-to-be-released DS successor, the 3DS, he explained that as great as Mario 64 was, for example, and as proud as he was with the way it turned out, when you take the Super Mario Bros. series and make it 3D, the, the range, range of players, players narrow greatly. greatly. Similar to the Mario Kart series, the 2D Mario games, or the Super Mario series of games, if you will, can be played by anyone, no matter your age or your ability. Bringing them into a 3D space, as proved by Nintendo themselves, dramatically drops that amount of people that can play these games. That does mean that the Super Mario series is often quite easy to complete. However, to get a 100% completion rating, you still have a significant challenge on your hand for the more hardcore gamer. And it's because of this that the company decided to create a 3D game and a 2D game for the system. And yes, you guessed it, even though the fans preferred the 3D outing, the 2D release won in sales again. However, this time it wasn't exactly a home run. Join the coin rush. You can turn Mario Gold and grab more coins than ever in New Super Mario Bros. 2. Only on Nintendo 3DS. Rated E for everyone. As great as this new 2D game was at bringing in new players to this new Nintendo 3DS, uh, an eventual bestseller for Nintendo that had a bit of a rocky start for fans of the new series, it actually was a bit of a step back. The main focus, or gimmick if you prefer, were the coins and therefore just like all previous entries your job is to collect as many as possible and as great as that may seem on paper its novelty wears off pretty quickly you're never gonna run out of lives in the game and you're pretty much in invincibility mode 90 percent of the time i tell you guys it's harder to get a game over in this game than it is to complete it on top of that the levels are based around this mechanic and very little else they don't offer up much of any kind of a challenge in any way shape or form and the reason for this is because the team that worked on it or a large portion at least were newcomers who were part of a mario cram school program as iwada sun puts it which was a learn how to make good mario games sort of a apprenticeship style work on the job thing and this game originally known as new super mario brothers 
was the end result. Look, I'm not completely hating on it. I still had fun with the game. I completed it, so obviously it did something right. It's just take away the most overpowered power-up in Mario history and all you have left is a game that might as well be the lost levels of this new Mario franchise. You know, if the lost levels was whatever's easier than easy mode. Thankfully, this game does have some paid DLC that eventually came out and acted like a mini hard mode, which really did knock it up a few points in my books. But besides that, it's forgettable and the furthest thing away from new. And this is where that new issue really did start to come into play. You think you're getting something new because why wouldn't you? It says it right on the box. But what you're actually getting is something that's not only old, but also not as good. Still, I'm sure you will all agree that a bland Mario 2D game is still better than virtually all other 2D platformers. Which takes us back to our time traveling DeLorean so that we can go three months into the future and stop at New Super Mario Bros. U, the last proper new game in the franchise, possibly ever. This is how you'll play next using the all-new Wii U gamepad controller to place a block and give everyone a boost. With new power-ups and new challenges in an all-new Mario game. Letting someone watch their favorite TV show while you keep the game going on the gamepad. New Super Mario Bros. U, only available on the all-new Wii U. Game rated E for everyone. Originally shown off as a way to demonstrate the awesomeness that was the Wii U at E3 2011, New Super Mario Bros. Me was just the Wii game but in HD, with remix levels that not only showed the capability of going from screen to handheld, but also gave its players the ability to use their own Miis too. But again, this is just a tech demo and nothing more. That was until the Spanish news site El Mundo spoke to Miyamoto-san and he leaked that the latest entry in the Super Mario franchise would be shown off at E3 that year, which of course was exactly where it was indeed shown off. The game was made in conjunction with the 3DS title, obviously. However, the team that made this game got to work as soon as the Wii release wrapped up meaning that it was originally designed before the Wii U development kit was even in place, using assets from the original, but in HD. Oh, and by the way, this was easier than you would expect, as the new Super Mario Bros. Wii game also got a port, strangely enough, to the Nvidia Shield, but only in China in HD. Of course, eventually everything got moved over when those Wii U kits came in, and of course, with a new Nintendo gimmick, the GamePad. <laughs> they needed to implement that into the game, and they did that very thing by letting someone else piss you off by adding random blocks. This adds nothing. Instead of giving you the ability to play with five players, Nintendo decided that the fifth player can be a troll. Sure, I guess the intention was to allow the fifth player to help others across hard to reach jumps, of which the game has very, very few, but all they do is just stop the enjoyment for all. Except the troll, that is. Thankfully, when you take that gamepad off the troll, what you're actually left with is a new, new Super Mario Bros. game that is the textbook definition of more of the same. Now, some may not like that, as part of Mario's charm is including new gameplay elements that really do shake up the releases significantly. But looking back, sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. And yes, even though we do get the flying squirrel Mario in this one, which, in all honesty, doesn't really add a whole lot to the overall experience. At the end of the day, this game is still a great 2D Mario experience. Look, I get it, it's a tad forgettable, and I gotta be honest that the only real gripe people have with it is that it's no longer new. In fact, it's the complete opposite. It's the same game we've seen multiple times before, but in HD. Thankfully, as stated, it's still great fun. I personally had a kick-ass time playing this 
this with four players just like the Wii version and just like the Wii version. It's a game I still enjoy playing as it's been ported to the Switch now too because, I mean, of course it has. With possibly the most stupid name of all up to this point, here is new, no it's not, Super Mario Bros. U, no it's not, Deluxe. No, it's not. This is the original deluxe version that came out for the Wii a short while after the original that featured new Super Luigi U levels. This Switch port has nothing added to make it deluxe besides one extra character that doesn't control as nicely as the ones that came before it. Thankfully, however, it does have the new Super Luigi U DLC added into this new Super Mario Bros. U deluxe game. And even though that is a stupid name, it does, in my opinion, make it the very best game in the new series. As the name suggests, in this game, you take control of Luigi and his friends. Mario, for whatever reason, is completely missing as the game serves as a sort of hard mode entry into the franchise. Yes, you can play in multiplayer, but this is really for the single player gamer that is forced to rush through the same levels as before, but this time in an extremely amped up redesign of each stage. This will seriously put your Mario 2D skills to the test. It's not unfairly hard like the Lost Levels, but it still provides for a really intense challenge and is by far the most rewarding title in the series to complete. Far from impossible, but still incredibly fun. So, where does this leave us? Well, you of course have the deluxe Switch game that I already showed off, a game that you would initially think isn't going to do that well, being that it is just a port. But if this episode has taught us anything, is that no matter how average a port or a game may be, if it's part of the new series, it's still going to sell absolute gangbusters. And this is no exception, being that it's in the top 10 of all time games in regards to sales for the Nintendo Switch to date. Just. Besides this, you have the surprisingly great Super Mario Run mobile game that, although it doesn't have the new name, is still very much the latest entry, albeit with radically different controls than you're used to due to the layout of a typical phone. But again, it really is quite good. And finally, you've got the brilliant Super Mario Maker series that has one of its art styles taken directly from the new series. I remember when I first saw the original entry on the Wii U and 3DS, one of the few games to not support any kind of 3D, I might add, and I thought to myself, how can they possibly ever make another new game after this? Because for all of you new fans out there, this new Mario Maker game brings with it endless new. And with the release of Mario Maker 2 for the Switch, those same thoughts entered my beautiful noggin. Because as superior as that game is in every single way compared to the entries that came before it, it is by far the worst selling typical Mario game for Nintendo's best selling system, even pulling in less numbers than the limited release Super Mario 3D All-Stars game. It still did well, mind you, but compared to all of those new games that came before it, it didn't exactly do gangbusters. The time to put that new title behind us had finally come. As on June 21st, 2023, Nintendo graced us with yet another new game. No, not that kind of new, thankfully. On June 21st, 2023, we got to see the latest 2D Mario game, Super Mario Wonder. Now this, this is new. A new art style, a new gimmick, new power-ups and a new way of doing things. And best of all, the word new is nowhere to be seen. The buzz behind the next entry was so fierce that it instantly made people talk down about the new series that came before it. Was it the stupid name? Was it the fact that virtually all kiddie merch, including my son's bedspread, was based on these games? Or was it because it had just one mediocre entry? Whatever the case, stop it. Look, I can get behind the absurd naming too. It's Dumb As Dung, which I've actually heard is the name of the next system, by the way. Keep that to yourself, mum's the word. 
But aside from that, there's no getting away from the fact that this franchise is beyond popular. It is the most popular franchise within the world of the most popular IP, and sure, even though it is not as widely regarded as the 3D titles, it showed the roots of gaming's most iconic character to several generations of gamers that had moved on to new things. In a world where my kids constantly talk at me about buying them more V-Bucks to get the ability to unlock a character that, that does bloody nothing in a game that locks the ability to collect them within only one month, it was the new series that brought the family together better than possibly any other franchise. A true classic in every sense of the word, and a game series that every single type of gamer can get a decent challenge from. 90% of the time. It's a series that smashed it in the sales department, being pretty much the main tentpole in getting several popular Nintendo systems in the hands of the many, and it's a series that shouldn't be disregarded because something prettier has come along and made the new series officially old news. As in old news, not old new. Ah! Hey there guys, thanks for checking out the video. It's the part of the video where I'd like to give a massive shout out to all of my Patreons, all of my YouTube members that allow me to make these videos every single week. I hope you like this one guys, because I seriously liked uh, making this one. Absolutely love these games, and um, it's been a long time since I've played through them. Uh, absolutely loved playing through them again. Really good games, really good games. Anyway. Let's give a shout out to those awesome Patreons and YouTube members. With an extra big shout out going to Ziggy Golightly, Boots and Pup, The Sneaky Ferret, Ray Blair, Vetus Varnas, Agro Crag, James, The Action Saxon, Roll VP, Jay is Manchild, Clan Bob, Mike Fallon, Nicholas Burtner, Chev Matic, Jabba Al Aiden, Benjamin Guy, Richard Aldajik, Shadow Dragon, Wobbles and Bean, The Wonder Ducks, Game Apologist, Dina, Ye Old Hamburglar, Jeff Mianowski, Bram Perez, Conrad Constantine, um, uh, Andrew Dalton, Todd Paul Float G, Ryan Burford, Casey Samples, Old Joel over Joel Zane, That Gamer, Shade Silence, Cat Layton, I'm getting all these wrong, Sir Nelson, Steven, Derekuda, Akatimo84, John Rogers, Matt Jackson, Ian Quell, Arista, Dina81, Mind of the Unsane, and Vike Echo. Thank you all guys so so much for your support i normally put those in alphabetical order i didn't this time and it really threw me off so yeah anyway thank you guys so much if you want to get your name shouted out get your name shown down below see what i'm working on all of that jazz then please please do sign up and become a patreon or youtube member you get access to everything i've ever done without adverts without sponsorships and a hell of a lot of other things too so much love to all of you guys but uh yeah for now this is dj slope signing out and hopefully i'll see you all next time bye bye Thank you.